Great. Welcome to Meet the Buyer series. We have three retail guests, two Bostons, Treats Unleashed, and DOG. And we will be hearing from Ink Clover Research, Nature's Logic, and Animate Pet Foods later in the session. Um, this series is an opportunity for um, us to come together and learn about retailers leading their, um, with their values and incorporating sustainability into the product selection process, as well as hearing from top accredited companies by the PSC um, who are uh, leading impact and social initiatives. Uh, these are our member companies. We're over 150 strong. And the Pet Sustainability Coalition focuses on working towards a better future um, for our industry through one-on-one -on -one member support um, and incentivizing company improvement, as well as addressing large-scale um, issues that are too large for just one company to solve. So an example of this is our Flex Forward packaging um, pilot that we are just finishing up. As I mentioned, the purpose of this event is to uh, connect retailers and brands that are meeting the consumer demand for sustainability um, that is becoming more and more prevalent that consumers are focused on sustainability um, and brand activism when they're shopping for products. Today's agenda, we're gonna hear from our panel of amazing independent retailers, then pitches from our top accredited companies and then do a Q&A um, with the accredited companies and the retailers. Our retailers today are um, Adrienne from Two Bostons, Holly from DOG, and Teresa of Treats Unleashed. Um, they come to us uh, from across the country and um, they're gonna talk a little bit more about um, their work and their values and how they bring their values into their retail operations. And before we get started on the panel, we wanna provide a brief introduction um, to these um, female founders. So uh, Adrienne comes to us, um, she opened the first two Bostons in downtown Naperville with her husband, Andy in 2005. And she had the dream of improving the lives and pets and their people um, through fun and education. And she now with six stores and having improved hundreds of thousands of pets lives to Boston's is continuing to grow and have fun uh, while supporting great team members, customers and local communities. Then we have Holly and Holly and her husband, Josh founded DOG in Bozeman, Montana in 2008. They started with a single location and one employee and that one employee is still there, uh, which is awesome to hear. And today DOG is an award-winning and growing franchise system with five operating locations and two more scheduled to open in 2021, one in Nashville and one in Colorado. Holly's um, veterinary background um, serves her role as the um, operations and purchasing director uh, for all the DOG locations. And finally, last but not least, we have Teresa Miller and she's the founder and co-owner of Treats Unleashed, a St. Louis based chain of pet supply stores. And they specialize in natural solutions and services for modern pet parents. Uh, Teresa is also an advocate for small businesses. Um, she is with the National Retail Federation and has spoken before Congress about sales tax uh, fairness. And prior to starting Treats Unleashed, she worked in web development and holds a bachelor's degree in finance and a master's degree in computer science. So with that, we are going to get started with the panel. So um, before we do that, Teresa, um, I would love to know from you and learn, I, you, you do a lot in your community um, and just learning more about different initiatives and how you're catalyzing um, that positive impact there. Sure, so with our community being a focus, um, a lot of what we do is dressing the shop local um, options. 
So we talk to people about shopping with us local, but we also then kind of roll that into how we talk with our vendors and how we find our partners uh, in terms of uh, the retail side of our business. So um, that's become a very big focus for us. We work really closely with local vendors um, and we see that very much as a sustainability um, effort as well. So if we can uh, narrow the amount of time it takes to get products into our stores, um, and we can talk to and share the story of our local vendors, uh, we find it's really impactful for our customers and they really respond. So shopping local is a big one. We also really focus on um, the reuse side of the uh, sustainability. So we work with a local pet food pantry um, and actually one in St. Louis, Kansas City, and also Columbia uh, to make sure that nothing goes to waste. So when a customer returns a bag that can easily be used, um, everything goes to those pet food pantries and we are very work very closely with them uh, in terms of products, food, treats, all of those kinds of things to make sure that they get a second life uh, where possible. So that's become a very big initiative for us, making sure that that waste is eliminated. Um, and there are so many people, especially right now, that can really use that food to keep their pets in their home. Uh, that's become a big cornerstone of our business as well. Um, also something that our team really gets behind. Um, so those are a few of the different things that we're doing in terms of change. Uh, we do manufacture our own treats in the store. So we do take a look at kind of what um, those the ingredients are and how they're being sourced. Is there anything local we can do there? Uh, we try to eliminate the wastefulness and the, with the amount of packaging and things like that of both the products that we're creating and also those that they were using. Uh, and like right now we're in talks with a local juice company um, to be able to reuse the pulp uh, that, from their juices uh, into our treats for a, a fun summertime line. So a few of those kinds of things are things that we can get our community involved with around us. Um, that one would promote the local juice bar as well as some of the things they're doing. Um, so it's been interesting. I can say one of the struggles that we're doing with right now in terms of sustainability um, is we're really trying to figure out a better use for our delivery operation. Um, that's one thing that's become a really big piece of our business. And uh, right now we're partnered with a courier company because they can make local stops and it's not quite as one on one, uh, but we're trying to find better solutions for that one. That's one area that we are really focused on this year to make sure that we can make it as efficient as possible, but also that we're doing the right thing. Uh, for customers and then also for our community. Yeah, that's thank you for bringing that up because that is now that we live in a world where consumers are more reliant on the delivery aspect, you know, thinking through how do we make that uh, more environmentally friendly, right? But also make sure that the positive impact that it has within that community as well. So, Jeff, thank you. Um, all right, Adrienne. So, uh, curious if you can talk more about your values, right, and how they're integrated into your retail operations. So you mentioned, you know, you walk in, you immediately feel the fun environment that there is. Um, would love to learn more. Absolutely. So Teresa, love the idea of you partnering with the juice company. I think that's awesome. Um, so uh, we are a company that uses traction or EOS, um, if any of you are familiar with that. And truly our core values are front and center when casting our vision uh, for what we want to be doing now and where we want to be in the future. So I actually happen to be the visionary for Two Boston. So it truly is my job to ensure we're constantly using our core values in everything we do. So this means that it's not just on a piece of paper or just that we look at it, you know, once or twice a year. Um, we live them so our team members, our customers, our community can actually feel them, you know, when they interact with us. So when I say that we use our core values in everything we do, it includes hiring. You know, like I'm you know, the last stop on the, the interview chain and my interview is solely about core values. Um, so, you know, if, if I make a poor choice, I, that's totally on me. So I'm making sure that they're a great core value fit. Um, so it doesn't disrupt, you know, what we have going on. Um, so we use it in hiring. We use it in rewarding our team members. Um, it, we use it in recognizing great brands and new products that we might want to bring in. Um, but we also use it to remove people, products, and companies from our organization that might no longer be in line with our core values. So using them as filters for everything we do, um, you know, our, our main core values are, like you were saying, Sarah, you had mentioned, you know, create fun experiences. That's, um, 
you know, that's an amazing thing that you can say you can do every day when you come, come to work. Um, service above everything. Always be improving. I don't want anyone to stay status quo. So we're always improving on everything that we do. I also want a team that exhibits ownership thinking. I don't have just employees. I have team members um, and they have, you know, the knowledge and um, the know-how to, to make good decisions. Um, be action oriented and obviously sharing our knowledge. Cause even if we know what we're talking about, it doesn't matter if as long, you know, if we're just keeping it to ourselves, we need to be able to share that knowledge and be a good resource for our community. Yeah, I think that piece about sharing, right, and being there, to, like giving that education is so important because a lot, I mean, I know I'm a new pet parent. And so I've learned a lot from going to re retail and like asking questions like, what is the difference? Why is this ingredient not good for my cat? Why is it? So right. um, that's, I think, a great way for the consumer too to continue to learn about sustainability um, and really understand why it's important to absolutely yeah our our vision is that you know they might come in confused and uncertain but if they're when they leave we should be giving them the tools so they they feel really confident in making the best decisions for their family and that goes for for everything that you just said yeah great um well holly um the next question is for you and you mentioned that you are growing um and you'll be in nashville um and here in colorado as well could you talk more about how you're building um, sustainability um, into uh, your franchise model? Yeah, sure, you bet. So um, as a franchise, obviously we want across the board, each location to be participating in those kind of things. Um, we do some everyday things in all locations uh, using energy efficient lighting. Um, we make sure that every location is utilizing cardboard, re cardboard recycling, which is obviously huge with all these boxes we're getting, right? Um, but it's, you know, it's amazing that we've had to ask for at some locations, like, Hey, we, we need this, you know, we have a proponent of that. Um, we do make sure that the stores have the, their terrace cycle stations, um, so that it's a conversation piece for clients as well. When they come in with those bags to recycle, um, we also donate a lot of food, um, trying to eliminate that waste as well. Like Teresa said, um, every store does it with local shelters are so many. So we try to rotate between them, um, giving food away. Um, we'll take anybody's bags, you know, not just ones that we rip or destroy, but um, we, as DOG as a whole, we actually have a, a proprietary grooming scheduling and pet health record tracking software. Um, so that has allowed all of our locations to go entirely paperless for our services. Um, so for all of our grooming, in all of our day camp, um, you know, there's there's a lot of information to be taking in for all those clients and their dogs. Um, so that was a big one for us. We were we felt you know that that was a big win for all locations. Um, we have recently partnered with Nature's Logic, um, so now all of our locations are powered by 100% renewable electricity, um, which is also super exciting, and we're really thankful to them on everything they're doing on their front. Um, and then getting to be a part of that, which is cool. Um, and we are also, uh, DOG is as a franchise, which trickles down to each location, is part of the PSC. Um, so we're, we're gonna be moving forward and um, Josh is kind of more involved in that, that segment than I am, but um, just talking with them and getting ideas on how you know, we can further identify ways to incorporate sustainable practices um, with, grooming services, you know, water is a huge one. Um, so we're really hoping to, to reduce that. Um, and so, yeah, so we're, it's something that um, is, is growing along with us and we're excited just to keep making that part of our business. That's awesome. I love how you're, the partnerships that you're, you know, going on with and like Nature's Logic, um, Carolyn will present later, but, you know, building, that is that's the point of um you know how sustainability can be catalyzed in the pet industry right and thinking outside the box and seeing you know how we can all work together um to really grow that and um, i think it's neat too that you're bringing that to different markets so i know that going into a different city state right brings its own challenges in terms of you know what their baseline is so 
it's great that you're able to bring that to Tennessee now and Colorado and um, see what happens there. For sure, thank you. Uh, so the last question that I have is for all three of you and um, Holly, let's start with you since um, you just finished. Um, can you tell us more, a lot of co um, companies and brands are here to learn about your product selection process. Um, you know, what are you looking for and you know, what recommendations do you have to folks that are interested um, in becoming part of DOG? For sure. So um, we're, we're a little different because we're a franchise concept. So um, as a franchise, we do have an approved brand list, right? Because there are certain um, brands that DOG won't carry, which I'm sure you guys all have that too. Um, but we do put a lot of it in the store owner's hands. Um, so I, I still help them and I find new things. And, you know, I mean, it's kind of a team effort, which is really cool. Um, but product selection is a big one for, I think, all independent pet stores because we want to be different. We don't want somebody to walk into our store and feel like we're Petco or PetSmart or, you know, another really big, huge chain. We want it to feel small. We want it to be attractive. Um, and we want that local feel as well. So, you know, in product selection, um, DOG loves fun, enticing toys, you know, things that display well where a client can grab it quickly. Um, but it goes beyond that, right? It goes to um, each local owner. We like them to be in their community, to find vendors that they could potentially carry, bring it in, um, great fun displays, you know, things that, again, give it community aspect um, and give it a unique feel. Um, so that's really big for us. We do as a whole, when we're looking at our product selection, um, we really value USA made products. Um, we like that it's providing jobs, but we also um, find that our clients are asking for that, right? So that's something that we want to pursue. Um, safe, non-toxic products. You know, there are family members. We don't want to just be given these dogs and cats anything. Um, we really, really value brands that are going to um, uphold that independent pet relationship. So that's a really big one for us. Um, we, we feel very strongly about that. And we also really value um, companies and brands that are doing something to um, have a social impact, right? To have a give back because we could look at two different brands and if they're carrying relatively similar things, we're gonna pick the brand that's more in line with our core values and makes a difference. You know I mean? They're, people like Earthborn and Open Farm doing the recycling. Um, Woe gives back meals to you know, people internationally and locally. Um, Earth Animals giving a percentage of their proceeds to like-minded organizations. You know, there's so many companies that we can choose to partner with. Um, and that really does make a huge impact when, when we're picking our product selection. Um, you know, it's, it, it is fun to have these brightly colored displays and you know I mean it's you know these kitschy things are great too like back to school displays and toys and things like that but um, when we're looking at our product mix and our product selection it does go deeper than just what we're seeing on the shelf. Great I'd love to hear that. <laughs> um, what about you Adrienne? Yeah so I think that that was all really really great information. Um, you know our number one guarantee to our team members and customers is that we don't carry anything in our stores that we don't feel 100% comfortable giving our pets at home. So, you know, we know that we could make a lot of money selling certain things, um, but you just won't see them in the stores. Like if I can't have a great smile on my face and hold my head up high while I'm suggesting it to a customer, it's just not going to find a, a spot on our shelves. Um, you know, of course we value things like Holly was saying about like, you know, made in the USA and, and different qualities like that too. But, you know, one thing that I think that is overlooked a lot by manufacturers is the personal relationships. Like we, I really value the personal relationships with uh, vendors, um, with our reps. Also, of course, the quality of the products, but also the integrity, not only of their products, but of the people who work there. Um, that is so important. 
Um, you know, and when making decisions, we have to keep in mind that every decision that we make has impacts on uh, the level of trust and loyalty and excitement that not only our team members have for two Austins, but um, our customers. And each product that we decide to bring in reflects that, reflects us and reflects all of the other products that we carry. So if we break that, you know, trust chain on one thing, you know, that definitely has a ripple effect um, throughout so many things. We don't carry a lot of Me Too products. I'm not one of those to have, you know, 18 different CBD lines, for example. We're choosing a couple of really great lines and we'd rather go deep with them. Again, create that relationship um, and also feel, feel like we know everything about it so we can answer our customers' questions. I'm also not gonna carry a product just because the national news tells me I need to carry it um, as we've all been kind of through that you know, recently. Um, and we're constantly listening for needs and pain points that need to be met um, from our customers. Uh, we have a whole system where you know, our team members every day are filling out, you know, like, what did we miss? You know, what, what products do we not have here that could help someone? And if we see uh, repeats of those, then that's definitely something that we're going to take a look at. Um, so, you know, we're looking to, to fill some voids and make sure that they go into our mix really well. And, you know, going back to the relationships with uh, companies, we're definitely way more willing to try a new product that a brand comes out with if we already have a relationship with them um, and, and have that trust built up already. So again, I think if, if there's anything that I'm saying that any manufacturers or, or product reps could take away, it's, it's that. Thank you. Um, Teresa. Yeah, actually, I'll just, I mean, I think Adrienne really hit it in terms of the relationships. I held that on my list as so very important. Um, it really does create that trust in the product. Um, so many times we bring in a product and then we kind of have to train our team members. So much easier to be confident about a product when you know the company, know who they are, um, and have, have confidence in, in the products that you're carrying. Um, I, I guess it's changed a lot in terms of criteria you asked about. Um, I mean, when we first started, uh, criteria was very best based around ingredients, country of origin, things like that, um, where it was made. Um, but it's really evolved and that those questions have evolved to be like, where are the products made? How are they made? Not just kind of where they're sourced. We ask a lot of questions about packaging. We look for really minimal packaging. Um, you know, how can we display an item with as little packaging as possible? You know, it doesn't need to have, you know, three cards on it um, and, then, and then plastic around it. How, how can we really uh, take that to, um, to minimize it? Um, I'll give you an example. We actually had um, a dump treat company that we were working with um, that started putting their individual package treats into boxes. Um, and our customers didn't like the extra waste. Just having the treat alone that they were picking up was, was just fine. So we look for a lot of things like that. Um, so as, as things change and evolve, we tend to change and evolve along with it. Um, and really when, I, when we're asking these questions of our manufacturers, it really is because our customers ask us and they use the answers to the questions that we ask to make buying decisions. Um, they also talk to our team members and our team members use those answers to help make product recommendations. So it really does come down to, we're asking these questions of our manufacturer partners for a reason, and we're taking that data backwards, being able to distribute it to our team and also to our customers, uh, because these are things that our customers and our team members really care about. Um, we're seeing that even more and more um, with our newer team members. They're asking questions about food. Um, they're asking about uh, non-GMO. They're asking about where these products were sourced and you know how um, in pet food you know ethical treatment uh, things like that they want to know these things so that they can make and and those are really the people on my team who make a product recommendation so it's very important for me to get these answers up, kind of up front they're how we make decisions um, and boy when we have a product that comes in that's new that kind of fits right in line with what our team members are excited about they can sell it like crazy um, the other thing that we are looking for really uh, from our manufacturer partners are solutions to problems. So um, not just additional Me Too products like Adrienne mentioned, um, we're looking for solutions. So the customer comes in and tells me they have the pro this problem. Um, I'm looking for a unique solution. 
so those are big things that we usually talk with people about. If it's a brand new product, kind of who is the customer that I would be selling this to? Why would I be selling it to them? And then tell me a little bit more about the product and how it's made and how I'm going to merchandise it and things like that. But, uh, but the questions we ask, we ask for a reason. Um, and that's because we pass along that information to the people who are really making the recommendations. Great. Yes, I love how you have the question of like, not only where is it sourced, but right, where, how is it made, right? What is that process? Um, because there, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, so thank yeah. You. Oh. yeah, our customers are asking these questions um, and they are reading a lot on the internet and they come in and they're confused because they're reading 10 different things that film 10 different things. Uh, so they come in knowing buzzwords and they want answers. Um, and the more we're able to get information from our manufacturer partners, uh, the more we're able to kind of put them at ease and make a good recommendation, something that they can feel confident in giving to their pet. Um, and that just ups the trust level, like Adrienne mentioned. There's got to be a trust factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the trust, like from all three of you, that's what I heard was like trust, right? In terms of not only from you to the manufacturer, but then being able to show that to the consumer because the consumer is looking for that. Um, so um, thank you. And with that, I want to, we're going to switch gears and move into our pitches from our brands. Um, perfect segue because these three brands all are doing amazing things in terms of um, how they're producing their ingredients and um, really building that trust piece. So um, with that, let's have Carolyn um, come on from Nat Nature's Logic. And if Holly, Teresa, Adrian, if you guys could turn off your uh, videos, that'd be great. And thank you so much for all the insights. And we'll be back with questions for them um, in about 10 minutes. And let me put up the slide for you. Thank you. There we go. All right. Uh, you, you are ready to go. And you. thank you. Yes. Hi, I'm Caroline Golan, and I'm the Vice President of Marketing at Nature's Logic. And Nature's Logic is a line of 100% natural dog and cat food with no synthetic vitamins. And we offer canned, kibble, raw treats and supplements. And our mission at Nature's Logic is to apply the logic of nature to everything we touch. And to us, this means creating an all natural pet food and being a voice for sustainability, which is what brings us here today. And we all know that sustainability isn't easy um, as an industry, we have a lot of things to work on. And thankfully, we have the Pet Sustainability Coalition guiding all of us. And at Nature's Logic, we are proud to be a PSC 20 brand, but we know we still have a lot of work to do. And we are looking at every aspect of our business in order to make improvements. Uh, but we do have a couple of exciting initiatives that I wanted to share with you today. The first is our Clean Food, Clean Energy Program. And with this program, for every pound of food that we sell, we purchase one kilowatt hour of renewable energy. So customers can help create a greener future just by purchasing Nature's Logic, which is really, we wanted to make it easy for them to make an impact. And so far customers love this program and we were super excited that Pet Business Magazine named it 2020's best consumer marketing campaign. And as Holly mentioned earlier, we're now getting our retail partners in on the fun, which is really exciting. Um, we allocate some of that 100% renewable energy that we purchase to power our retail partner stores, which is you know, really exciting, especially for customers who care so much about sustainability, something unique to set these stores apart. Um, the stores get in-store materials, uh, digital assets, and more. We do some local PR around it. And plus we're teaming up with environmental groups to provide special coupons and incentives for their members. We absolutely love that this model brings new eco-conscious consumers into our partner stores. It makes a big difference. Uh, the second program that we're really excited about too is our certified plastic neutral program. And every bag in our distinction line, which you see up on the screen, as well as some of our treats and some upcoming diets um, is certified plastic neutral. 
And what this means is that we basically calculate the amount of plastic that we use in our packaging and invest in the removal of the equivalent amount of plastic and sometimes more from the waste stream. And we partnered with a really great organization called Repurpose that works with women owned micro businesses in India to remove and process this plastic. The businesses are supported by the program in such a way that uh, the workers have um, great benefits, fair wage, safe working conditions, and importantly, no child labor. Um, so that's, that's just a fantastic program on so many levels. You know, we know certified plastic neutral is only part of the equation and we're evaluating all of our packaging. Um, but in the meantime, we just think it's a great step in the right direction. And we were the first in the pet industry to go certified plastic neutral. And we believe soon you'll be seeing um, more brands joining us. And that's extremely exciting for us. And we can't wait. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Um, really appreciate. Yeah. I love how you have partnered with one of our retailers. So that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. Um, and if anyone has any questions um, for um, Nature's Logic, please put them into the chat. Um, the work that you all are up to is incredible, um, especially with the process of how you've gone about with the certified plastic neutral product. So um, may Thank ask you. you a question about that later. Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on to Rebecca uh, with In Clover. And let me switch the slide. There we go. And take it away. Thanks. I'm so happy to be here today. I'm Rebecca Rose. And for those of you that I've not yet met, I'm the founder of Enclover, and I'm also the product developer. My background is as a biochemist. And at Enclover, we make scientifically researched supplements that are specially designed to enhance health and to solve common problems in dogs and cats. Each of our ingredients are especially curated to work with the physiology of the animal, and some of them are pretty unique. So with this model, supplier relationships are critical. We work with 24 suppliers. Each of these have had a long collaborative relationship with us, many for 20 years. At the beginning of the pandemic, we contacted all of our suppliers to ensure we would maintain our quality supply. And having this foundation and direct relationship with our suppliers allows us to truly partner with them. This lets us maintain quality and, so, and social performance in our, in our company and in our, all of our ingredients and final products. We do this in a couple of ways. One, we screen our suppliers for environmental and our social performance with our supplier uh, chain a code of conduct. And this is a quantitative tool that is provided by PSC and it's available to all members to measure improvement. And because PSC is continually improving the tools, we're able to make large and incremental improvements in a variety of areas. I feel very important, very fortunate to be a part of the pet industry. We've seen tremendous growth while other industries struggle. However, this past year took us through uncharted territory. 20 years ago, when I was starting in Clover, we made the decision to join the National Animal Supplement Council and to sit at the table and share systems with our direct competitors. I went on to lead the NASC's membership committee and serve on the board of directors. As a company, we have spent over this time six figures in dues, audits and travel. This collaboration was a tough decision on a lot of levels, including human and financial resources. But we did it and we continue to do it to lift the quality and accountability of the entire supplement segment and to build our resilience. With collaboration, we have a lever to advance our business. Collaboration allows us to make significant progress and to have positive impact. We've been active members and recipients of the Pet Sustainability Coalition's actionable tools, measurable goals, and substantial community knowledge. 
with PSC and this PSC community walking ahead of us and extending a hand back, we've been able to hit measurable goals and earn the Positive Impact Award for Supplements for two years running now. Additionally, we've spent over 300 hours in the last three months working toward our B Corp certification and are moving toward B Corporation submission this year. As part of doing business for good, which is the basis of B Corp and built into in Clover's DNA, we believe also in giving back to the community. We have served on the board of directors at the business school at the local university we participate in the University of Colorado's professional mentorship program and provide paid internships to high school and college students. We provide meaningful work within our company for intellectually and developmentally disabled individuals and serve on our local advisory and governing boards for IDD provider services. We're a small company and as a small company, these collaborations with suppliers, competitors, industry partners and the community have allowed us to have a foundation and support to be resilient during these trying times and to expand our business and do the right things even when it's hard. So if there's just one message that you can take away from this, it's that be collaborative and make those hard choices because that's what's going to help build that foundation. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Yes, um, the collaboration piece is so, so important. And um, thank you for mentioning uh, your best in category status. So all three of these companies um, are top 20 of our accredited companies and in Clover is um, best in category um, two years running. So, and it's because of all the things that Rebecca just talked about. <laughs> um, so if we can, Alex, if you wanna come on, um, you are last, but certainly not least. Great. There you are, great. And um, take it away, I'm excited to hear. Okay. Yeah, thank you, we're, we're happy to be here today. Thank you for having us and for setting this all up. Um, I'm Alex Downey with Animate Pet Foods. Uh, I'm the business development manager at Animate. It was actually started by my parents, Rob and Mary Jo Downey, back in 1986, and we're a family-owned and operated dog and cat food company. Um, we're a little bit different than your normal company. We're really big into the outdoors. We're really big into uh, nutrition, and we actually spent a lot of our winters racing sled dogs up in Alaska. So every year we'd be up there um, in the cold as I was growing up. So we have sort of a different look on the environment. A lot of people up there use uh, sustainability, sustenance living, and they live off the land. Um, so sustainability has sort of been a fabric of Animate since we started. Um, and as, as many of you know, there's a sustainability issue going on in the, um, the unsustainable fishing in the oceans, which is sort of a big, it's a big part of our industry here in sourcing of ingredients. Um, so Animate decided to see what we could do and, and do our part in making a change. Um, so in 2016, we partnered with the MSC, the Marine Stewardship Council, which is sort of the gold standard for sustainability in seafood. Um, and what they do is they monitor certain levels of fish in the ocean to make sure that we're not overfishing and then we're leaving enough for future generations. Um, so later that year, we came out with Animate Sustain, which you can see here. Um, it's, a, it's an Alaskan cod formula where all the fish in there is line caught. And the cool thing that they do is it's actually traceable from the, the boat that that fish was caught on all the way to the bag that it ends up in. Um, so they're monitoring at every level of the process uh, to, to make sure that we're leaving enough for future generations and that we're not overfishing. Um, since then, we've launched two more sustainable MSC certified formulas um, in feline sustain, which is the cat version of this. Um, it's, a, it's an Alaskan cod formula as well. And then we've released a puppy food, which is Ohana, Animate Ohana. Um, we've, we've since then added a fourth member to our sustainable line of kibble in Animate Rejuvenate, which is a senior formula that isn't MSC certified because it's a little bit unique. It uses uh, silver carp, which is an invasive species out of the Illinois River region. They're native to Eastern Europe and Asia where there's sort of a delicacy there. But here they're considered an invasive species. So we're trying to clean up the rivers and use them 
as much as we can. Um, they're a really clean source of protein. They're eating algae and plankton pretty much all day. So they're eating up the diet of the native fish, sort of squeezing them out. But that makes them a really good protein source in that they're really clean and really high in omega-3 and 6 fatty acid levels. Um, in addition to that, across all of our formulas, we're using sustainable ingredients wherever we can, um, like the algae that we use. So we don't have to use as much fish oils, which is a, a real big issue in the industry. The algae allows us to get omega-3 and 6 fatty acids in there at a much more sustainable level than using straight fish oil. Uh, and it's actually much more stable in terms of, of how it's put into the food in a powder instead of uh, a fat, which is going to oxidize. But anyway, um, yeah, that's it for Animate. But we're really excited to be part of the PSC and the, the community that you guys are building. So thank you for having us. Thank you, Alex. Um, yeah, I, I'm curious to learn more about the algae component. Um, so I, I'll come back to that in the Q&A. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so actually, if you want to keep your video on and then all of the other um, panelists as well, um, mm -hmm. we're going to move into um, the Q&A um, in just one minute. Um, so I have, please bring in any other questions that you have. Um, I have a couple um, that I'm seeing. Um, so let's get started um, with the first question that came in. Um, and this is from Jennifer and she is with um, Greenline Pet Supply and she's also an accredited company. And she is asking um, to the retailers, um, both Teresa, Adrian, and Holly, um, how do you evaluate hard goods beyond made in the USA? And how do you communicate that value to your customers? Um, so Teresa, you mentioned a little bit about this. Do you, would you like to take the first answer? Sure, I'd be glad to. The, um, so we, we have a couple of different options that we look for um, in our hard goods, um, kind of where it's made and, and who is making it uh, are probably big ones in our, in our um, list of criteria. So we're looking at, you know, what, um, are they something unique? Who's making it and how it's owned even? Um, a lot of our customers are looking for some of those smaller companies in terms of supporting smaller vendors. So we, we take a look at that. It also allows us to create those relationships. Uh, so there are a few different things alongside um, ideas like the packaging, that type of thing. Um, and then in terms of how do we communicate it to our customers uh, when we have a new product or we've got um, a new product from an existing uh, vendor partner, uh, we do a lot in terms of communication uh, through newsletters, um, social media, that type of thing, letting people know that we've got something new in the store um, and kind of giving the story. For us, providing a story is something uh, that we like to wrap around a product. Uh, so another reason that we ask you all kinds of questions is to help us develop that story that we can then relate to a customer um, that will kind of help them understand the product a little bit better or how it might uh, impact their pet. And then also you have to get down to the nitty gritty too. You know, what is the margin on the item? So I'm not going to feel awesome about bringing in a new product that I have to work harder to kind of share that story, like Teresa was saying, if I'm going to be making less money on it, right? Um, so there has to be a healthy margin for us. Um, also, you know, we would be asking questions about, you know, what are the shipping times? What are the, you know, turnaround times? Um, also, as we get into a relationship, we're looking at consistency and what is the ease of communication, you know, with, with our partners. Um, right now, the, just this morning, you know, I was trying to make a decision on, I've got this really, really um, popular chew and someone else presented an item, someone I already have a relationship presented, you know, an item that is similar. And like I said, I'm not going to just bring in something like a Me Too item, but you know, my original um, line, they're having a really hard time supplying us. So, you know, looking at, at the supply and how consistent it can be is, is really important as well. And at, we actually had just two questions come in that are great um, segue from this in terms of the marketing, right? So asking about what type of marketing works um, to show that sustainability story to you as, as the retailer, right? Um, and another question is, you know, what do you recommend as the best way to get our messaging and our story out there um, to retailers when it comes to our efforts in sustainability? 
Holly, do you want to? Um, sure. So yeah, so the um, vendors asking how they tell the story to us, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Like how do they, how do they make it juicy? Right. How does that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, print ads is probably not the best way for us anyways. Um, you know, I mean, I, I love um, just an, a quick intro in a print ad maybe or something, but if I can get, you know, we're in the era of now zoom and Google me on everything, but um, if I can get a quote unquote face to face with somebody, um, even a 20 minute, you know, like this, like a rapid fire pitch, tell me, tell me the key things. Um, I think that that's huge. I think for our staff as well, because they're the ones on the floor, they're the ones selling it. You know I mean? I can like a product or a brand all day long, but unless my staff and each store owner knows the story and they have that, that kind of pitch or they have the relationship, um, it, you know, it, it's going to stop with me if it doesn't go to them. Right. So, um, I think, you know, getting, getting a hold of each store and telling that story. Um, we, we love when reps come in, honestly, I know not every store is into that. We love it. Um, we love the face to face. I love it if the staff can get behind it. Um, so I, I think, you know, marketing tools, um, Social media is obviously always a good one. Most of us are on there. Um, I see a lot that way. In fact, we've found brands in the past that way. You know, you click here and then you click here and you've got a cool new brand you found. Um, but I, I really think a lot of it, um, and you know, it's been said before, but relationships. So if we can get a face-to-face -face and start that and figure out what the company is about, to me, that makes a huge difference. Great, and I know that, um... And Jessica, thank you. <laughs> I know I would love to hear too from the brand's perspective, right? So Rebecca, I know that you have a newsletter that you send out to um, some retailers and um, just curious, you know, how, how you go about telling, telling that story. We have a, a bit of a more of an educational story than some brands do. The newsletter is very effective for us. We also have and believe in strong relationships with our partners because once you understand the story and you can talk about, um, you know, oh my gosh, they were up in Washington state at a goat farm. What, what was that about? And what ingredient did that mean? You know, it makes it sort of fun to share that story. So a newsletter or this kind of face-to-face -face, um, interaction for us is good. Of course, we do use social media because um, it's a way we can tell in quick, digestible bits, how our ingredients work and why they're different. Mm -hmm. And Alex, what about, how are you telling your sustainability story, not only to retailers, but to the customer? Yeah, we're, we're big on education as well. Um, we like to do a lot of different webinars and try and connect with the consumers. That's been the most effective way recently when you know, we haven't been able to travel as much to get out our message. Um, we've done some smaller infographics in the trades and everything like that, but that mostly goes to the retailers. To get to the end consumer, I think uh, a push on social media, newsletter, all those kind of things, um, like Holly said, as, as long as you can get the brand in front of them and they can click around and make it easy to use, that's a, a good way to educate. Great. Um, and then Carolyn, I, I saw another question come in from Penny. Um, could you talk a little bit more about how you partner um, with retailers and other industry partners um, with the 100% renewable energy initiative? Absolutely. Well, um, the consumer focused program has been in effect for quite some time, um, but the retail program is literally just now getting off the ground. So we're really just launching it. Um, but we, you know, it's, uh, we select retailers um, that are interested in sustainability. Um, and a lot of times we know that obviously from conversations and, you know, back and forth and relationships. Um, and we work with them and we say, you know, here's the, the program, um, which is, you know, we will convert your store to 100% renewable energy. And then uh, we offer them some, you know, point of purchase materials, window cleaning, so that they can um, promote that in store. So that customers coming in the store that care about sustainability are going to notice it right away. Um, and so, like I said earlier, um, you know, we'll do things like partner with local environmental groups um, and let them know about the program. 
and send promotions or coupons to get them to come and visit the store. So from a marketing standpoint, it's really important for us to reach out to customers that we know care about sustainability already, rather than trying to convince customers that they should care about it. That's next, but we try to reach the folks that we know already care about it and already has some knowledge around it. And that, that's been very effective for both our brand and also for the retailers. That's awesome. I love that um, because like you're saying, like there's different segments of customers and thinking through that. And you brought that up, Teresa, as well, right? And just knowing, meeting them where they're at and knowing what information, education, those different groups are going to be excited about. Everyone will get there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but there is definitely a segment that, that understands and cares um, a lot about it right now. Yeah. And appreciates brands that do as well. Um, so we are about at time. Um, it's always hard to choose which is going to be the last question. Um, I see one about, have any of the panelists worked with um, fly, uh, black soldier fly larvae? Alex, I know you mentioned, okay. We've looked into it, but I, I think until they get their AFCO approval, I'm not sure that we can really use it. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I love, let's end with this question. Um, Earth Month is in April. What are we going to do, Earth Day, right? April 22nd. What are we going to do to engage customers to care? So if each panelist just wants to go and you know, brief one sentence, what you're thinking you're gonna do. And I know this is quick, right off the cuff. <laughs> um, but again, any ideas of, you know, and it doesn't have to be in April, right? Um, and a great example is how um, Carolyn and Holly have partnered, right, to work and have this 100% renewable energy. So that's a great example. So it's always easy for us to also to do a series of blog, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, posting vlogs of our most popular um, earth friendly products. Sticking to one sentence. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's hard. I know it's hard. Um, I would say for us, we would do in-store displays. You know, every store when you walk in has the table, right? And so it's really fun to highlight those. Um, we often find engaging clients and a bit of like a competition or like if you, you know, buy this, then you get this or whatever it is, but um, trying to get them to buy and be engaged with those brands, right? So not, not a blog that's way more than one sentence but um in store displays and, and and trying to get the customer involved so i'll throw out ours for a tree unleashed in years past we've gone to the earth festivals that are in our community um, and taken a variety of products that we can speak to their um their sustainability and their focus on sustainability this year, we're going to do that more virtually, uh, where we'll just be recognizing different products, very similar to what Holly is saying in terms of displays, that type of thing. I'm sure, we'll do something video-wise, uh, where we really call out some of those products who are going above and beyond for sustainability. Great. We're looking at uh, co-marketing efforts with companies that are part of this tribe to get consumers more aware of the initiative. So if anybody in this has interest, please reach out. Yeah, we're doing some education as well to try and drive interest into the sustainability aspects of sourcing your ingredients and the pet food industry as a whole. Great, that's awesome. Carolyn, anything you wanna add where you're good? I'm good, just social media and um, promoting some of the, the um, philanthropic efforts that we're making right now and, and generating some interest around that. Great. Yay. Well, PSC, um, I'm going to put in a plug for the accreditation program, right? So that's a great way that consumers and retailers can learn um, about companies like these awesome three today um, that are verifying um, their sustainability claims um, with a third party verification. So make sure to look for that logo um, on different uh, virtual events, different trade platforms. Uh, we just launched with WPA 365. So everyone has their little badge there. Um, and thank you to everyone for coming.